Yeah, so a year later, you landed an unpaid internship, internship, excuse me, with the Clippers video room, turning it into a full-time job. And several of the NBA's top coaches started their careers in the same way in the video room, to name a few, like Coach Eric Spolstra, Mike Budenholzer, Frank Vogel, and Mike Brown. Now, you started in the Vinny Del Negro era, and then you stayed in Doc's tenure and Ty Lue's, creating relationships with players like CP3, Blake Griffin, Paul Pierce, and others. And at 34 in 2014, you became the first female to sit among assistant coaches on the bench in the summer league. Can you talk to us about how you landed the Clippers gig and tell our listeners about the Vinny Del Negro grabbing your notes story when you first got to the, <laughs> to the Clippers? Let me applaud you guys for doing your research. Wow. I'm highly impressed. Like you guys are like word for word in like some of my stories. Um, I mean, to keep it pretty short, uh, I mean, I, I remember wanting to, you know, be in the NBA. I was, I was learning under a, a former NBA coach, Bob Hill in Japan, uh, who gave me my first opportunity. And when he uh, had his practice plans and his schemes and the way he wanted to prepare for a game, it was unreal. Like it was stuff that I've never heard of in terms of language terminology like I was like whatever he knows I want to know I was obsessed and then um, so when I told that to my dad I said look I want to work in the NBA like I want to know exactly what he knows and he's like well he's like the NBA is in the United States of America he's like I'm going to need you to move back and I and I enjoyed my time in Japan though you know I was still young um, just enjoying like learning different cultures but he's like no move back so I did what my dad said. I moved back. Not I had didn't have a job, um, but I've learned from Bob. Like you got to reach out to as many connections as you can that you have with NBA, which I had zero. Um, so Bob was the one who was like just trying to do everything and anything, but he couldn't get a sniff of anything. And so this is so random, but a, a friend of mine who I was training, um, her name's Allison Taka. She said, "I'm going to go to the Clippers facility for this coach's clinic," and I said you're going to do what, you know, I was like, what? And this was like really close to the beginning of the Clippers season. Like the training camp was like a month away and I had no job. And she said, you want to go? And I was like, yeah. Cause Bob Hill told me, you know, anytime you have an opportunity to step into the facility, like an NBA facility, you do it. And, you know, I drive by the Clippers facility all the time and you just sit there and hope and pray like somebody would open the door or something like that. But so I went in and I walked in and one of the Clippers coaches was running the clinic at the time. And he said, hey, welcome to Youth Coaches Clinic. And I'm like, Youth Coaches? And I was like, oh my God, what did I get myself into? Um, so we just did you know, real fundamental drills. And then he actually made us do the workout. And so when I was sitting there doing the ball handling drill, he was like, hey, he goes, did you play or something? Because you can handle the ball. I said, yeah, I played at UCLA, da, 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 da. And then after, you know, I've learned like never – never hesitate on a moment of an opportunity. So after he was like, y'all have any questions? And I, I raised my hand like five times. I'm like, yes, yes, yes. I'm like, what does CP do? What does Blake do? And then after when the clinic was over, I pulled him, I went up to him um, on the side and I said, hey, you know, you're talking about CP's workouts. I'm like, would it be okay if I email you tonight and possibly like ask you a couple of questions? And he said, sure, why not? So he gave me his email address, go home. I hit him like, hey, can I, like come to a workout and just observe, you know, cause that's how I got the job in Japan. And um, yeah, within five minutes, he hit me back and said, yeah, he's like, see you tomorrow at 10. And I just started jumping like out of, out of my seat. Like just, I was going nuts. I was like, oh my God, I'm about to go see CP and Blake work out. And sure enough, I, you know, brought my notes, you know, always bring your notes, always, you know, um, write down as much as you can, what you're learning. And just, I just kept coming. I'm like, hey, can I keep coming? Can I keep coming? And they're like, yeah. They're like, why not? And then, I mean, two weeks go by and they're like, what do you want? I'm like, do you guys have a video intern position open? And the video guy um, at the time was like, we might. And I'm like, that's all I needed to hear. Um, and then I was sitting there. I remember it was so funny though. I think it was either Blake or DJ, I can't remember, but they, after like seeing them every day, they're like, are you a news reporter? And I'm like, no, <laughs> I was like, no, I go, I'm just here just to watch and learn, you know? And um, so I sit there on a table and then Vinny Negro, who didn't come down often, you know, he let the other like player development coaches coach and he came down and he just didn't say hi or anything. He just slammed his hand against my notepad when I was sitting there at the desk. And then he read it and he was like, he's like, Dan, he's like, you're taking like really good notes. He's like, you're actually 
learning. And I'm like, oh yeah, I'm like, I'm not missing this opportunity. And he's like, I heard you wanted to be our video intern. And I just looked up to him like in my mind, like praying. I'm like, just say yes, just say yes. And he goes, you're hired. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> I was like, great. And I just, you know, I remember calling my best friend, went home and I just celebrated, had some Mexican food and margaritas and I was ready to go.